Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to 18.2 Launch Week and today's webinar, What's New in 18.2 for DevExtreme? Presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell and DevExpress Web Program Manager Mahul Harry. We have officially released 18.2 if you don't know already. All you have to do is click the My Downloads link and you will see the latest version 18.2.3. In this session, Mahul and Julian will explore our uh, will explore our newest DevExtreme components and features set to ship as part of 18.2. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. And we will send the link to the recording in a follow-up email sometime next week. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Julian and Mahul. Well, thank you, Amanda. Hey, good morning, Julian. Good morning, Mahul, and of course, good morning, everybody on the webinar. Welcome to what's new in version 18.2 for DevExtreme, which involves a whole bunch of other things as well. Absolutely, because DevExtreme is uh, providing lots of great support for all these popular frameworks, including Angular, React, Vue, ASP.NET MVC, and ASP.NET Core, including, of course, uh, good old jQuery. And we're going to talk about all of that today, right, Julian? Absolutely. Uh, we have a lot of uh, news to give you, and a lot of new features, new enhancements, new everything, really. New bunch of code and websites and stuff and uh so julian uh, ah. this is almost <laughs> like uh uh well i shouldn't say new to express but we've always been rather open we always listen to our customers but especially this uh last couple of years we've focused a lot more on gaining your feedback so earlier this year this guy with the glasses uh, talked yeah, about yeah. Uh, our overall roadmap including uh, what we've got coming up in like a recent release. So as recently as September, we talked about what was going to be in this release. So I'm happy to say a lot of this stuff is in the 18.2 release that Amanda just said is available today, but don't download it yet because you have to stay and watch us. Uh, so you get context, <laughs> right? So you can understand what's in the release and how it can be useful for you. And that's what we hope to deliver for you today. So we're going to talk about all of this and more. That's in 18.2. And we'll start with the DevExtreme UI, the core set of uh, widgets uh, that provide a lot of the features. So the new uh, widget has, was the new feature. So Julian, let's start with the uh, the venerable data grid. Uh, what's happening in the data grid? Well, kind of an interesting one, this one. Um, with a data grid, you, you're basically displaying a whole bunch of rows, uh, which are records in your database, presumably. And each of those rows has, you know, uh, the same columns and all the rest of it. We also have what we call a command column in there. And what we've done in 18.2 is allow you to uh, customize that command column um, a lot more than previously. And um, by commands, I mean things like, edit this row or delete this row or add a row or whatever it happens to be. Those kind of commands which apply to um, that the row or the, the data in that row or whatever it happens to be. So the command column, we're basically giving you a whole bunch of new ways of um, customizing that particular column. So things like, for example, yeah, specifying the width of the column, uh, its position, not only the first and last, which are the kind of usual places, but hey, if you want to put it on column four, then put it in column four. Um, you can now define a template for the contents of each cell in that column. Um, you can uh, add a custom command button to uh, the column. In fact, a whole bunch of buttons. Um, in fact, uh, Mihal, if he shows me the um, um, the demo there, uh, we'll have uh, three items in that uh, particular column. 
May who? Uh huh. Sure. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have three items, three icons in that particular column. That column on the left there, in showing on the grid, uh, we have the edit, which is like the pencil thing, the delete, which is the the trash bin, and we have this nice weird looking arrow in a circle, uh, which is one of those customized commands. Uh, it's um, basically set to be a copy command, essentially. Um, you can have as many command columns as you want. If you just want one, then fine, have one. If you want seven, have seven. Um, you know, not only uh, do we provide, you know, quote, standard command buttons that you can use, uh, if you leave them out, then they're not available. Um, so if you don't want anybody editing a row, then just leave out that edit button. Um, and you can specify um, you know different um, items inside that cell for each row um, the customizations are infinite well not quite infinite but pretty broad so command column customization that's a, a great one the next one I want to talk about is um, we've added a um, uh, how can I put it a new way of uh, controlling the data grid and tree list um, on the focused row. So when you have a focused row, yeah, we show it in a different color and all the rest of it. But it's this is more when you have some kind of master detail relationship, not necessarily master detail, but you have a row and you want to show more information about that row in, say, a separate panel. So we've added a new API to allow you to do that. So here is the example we have. Um, each row has some extra information um, underneath the grid. And as you change the row, um, and navigate through the grid uh, using the mouse. Uh, sorry, using the keyboard in this particular sense. Um, you know, you can see that panel changing with information for that particular high, um, uh, sorry, focused row. So our new API allows you to implement um, not only that, but also custom keyboard navigation through individual cells if you want to do something along those lines. So focused row, keyboard navigation, both enhanced for 18.2. Very cool, and I really like that. And you know what's nice is this uh, keyboard navigation. As I uh, click down, uh, as you can see, it will go to the next page uh, as I expected, or go up to the previous page. So really, really yeah. awesome features. And we've added some things in here for on focus row changes and so forth that you can take advantage of. Now we've also Julian improved the export capabilities by uh, increasing the Excel cell customization. So as you can see, on cell prepared here, I'm highlighting some rows here based on some sale amounts and so forth. Now, if I export this out to Excel and I take a look at this Excel file, you will see that I've kept the same uh, rows the same uh, on export as well. So I've highlighted the same rows. So uh, and what's important about this is it's not I'm not just dumping this data. This is an Excel file, so we're using our special Excel export to generate a proper Excel file. But as we do it, we're we're making sure that we use the same logic to customize the same cell, and we're doing this with the new customized Excel cell method. And this essentially says, look, the same logic that I've got on cell, prepare, cell prepared there, I want you to do it when, I, when you export as well. So that makes it uh, very powerful. Now, we've went beyond, uh, let, me, let me talk about a feature that's beyond just the data grid. I'm going to show it first with the data grid because I think it's just a, very exciting. And that is we've got a new, uh, let me show it here a new set of uh, real-time UI updates and a new push API. So what this means is that several DevExtreme uh, widgets have been updated. And I'll talk all about this in just a second in terms of the uh, updates and so forth. But what's important here is that previously we had some SignalR support. But now we've got further. So now you can include local live updates, work with real-time data, uh, and push updates through WebSockets or Socket.io. And in several of our online demos here, you'll see that we have, uh, but, 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 but where did it go? Right over here, let me just do C. 
signal R. And this is, I love this search, by the way. It lets you get to find something real easy. And you can see all the signal R demos that we have as well. So you can see now the data grid has uh, a, a sample. What we're doing is we're using signal R on the server. And if you're not familiar with signal R, it's a HP tech, uh, server technology that lets you do push uh, updates and so forth. So uh, your client side can even subscribe to certain updates and all that kind of stuff. But what's nice is we have updated several of the dev extreme controls, including the data grid, as well as uh, you'll see here, uh, charts, uh, uh, tree list, uh, as you can see, scheduler, and uh, several other ones as well, like list, accordion, temp panels can also get partial UI updates. So uh, a lot of these are updated. So for example, here with the scheduler, we can see that we can use it to broadcast push notification. So for example, if one person makes a change, then the other person will get that update as well. And you can see that in all of these uh, samples here, that this works really well. So if you, this one's a, a candlestick chart, so it doesn't necessarily update as fast, but if you were to sit here and watch it, you would see that it would move along. But let me show you using the, for example, SignalR service here, and you can see how fast the updates are happening here. So what's happening, and the reason for that is because we have done performance updates to a lot of the controls as well. So a lot of the widgets have been optimized and what that means is that uh, you can see here, for example, some refresh times on the data grid here, right? And what we've done is that the, the, we realize that sometimes when you change the, uh, uh, an item, the entire grid doesn't need to be repainted only. Perhaps only uh, certain uh, changes need to be updated. So now uh, several of the widgets have been updated to optimize for this. And that's why not only you can see in the past, in 18.1, what that update may look like, but you can just see how the repaint changes can also appear so much better. So if even if you don't use the update, uh, the uh, the real-time updates, just by going to 18.2, you're going to notice performance upgrades in several of the widgets. Now, if you are highly interested in this, definitely take a look at not just the blog post, but the actual demos. We have so many great demos, and what's great is all of this, because it's part of DevExtreme, that technology bubbles up, so it's supported by Angular 1, Angular 2+, Plus, Vue, React, MVC, and Core. So all of those are absolutely supported. So this was a big feature. The team worked hard on it. We want you to use it, and it's uh, not a it's not a CTP or anything. So it's actually fully released, and you can start taking advantage of it today. And we'd like you to. We'd like you to use it. Give us your feedback. And I believe in the blog post we even have like a short survey question. You know, what do you think of this? Is this something? Do we do we waste our time with this? Is this something you're gonna want or not? Because you know. And by the way, uh, a lot of our stuff is driven by your feedback. So you know. Uh, I would say uh, a large part of it, which is why, uh, as we mentioned at the top, we ask uh, so much of your feedback. All right, Julian, let's move on. What else is happening with the DevExtreme UI? So let's do a little bit of data visualization here. And we have a new um, Sankey chart. And, you know, like three months ago, whenever the um, the team was saying, yeah, we're going to do this, I was all like, what the heck is a Sankey diagram or a Sankey chart? And it's a, it's a kind of a chart which shows some kind of flow. And there goes my phone. Let me just disconnect it. And uh, it's a flow diagram. So, and what's interesting about the flow diagram is not just, you know, arrows between boxes and all the rest of it, but the width of the arrows actually means something. It's proportional to uh, the quantity of whatever is flowing. Um, so you can imagine, say, for example, uh, okay, you've got a warehouse and we're shipping out uh, widgets from this warehouse. A certain number of these widgets go by FedEx, a certain number go to the post office, so on and so forth. You can show that information as a Sankey diagram to show, you know, by the width, how much or how important a particular flow is. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's one of those things where I think that once you 
you know, see what it is and how it works and, and the kind of information that it uh, conveys as you look at it, um, it makes you want to try it out. So Sankey chart, new in 18.2. And um, the nice thing about ours is, you know, the way you can hover over the, the flows and see more information about the flows and so on and so forth. So try it out, the Sankey. And as we're talking about charting, let's uh, quickly um, talk a little bit about our new enhancements for zooming and scrolling data. So you've got a chart. It's got a lot of data in it. And you want to somehow, you know, concentrate on a particular part of that chart. So nicest thing about this is you can basically draw a, uh, by using your mouse, you can draw a, a rectangle and we'll zoom in on that particular portion of the chart. And notice how quickly that happens with our uh, DevExtreme chart. It's very nifty. And once you're zoomed in, you can basically scroll away to, to wherever uh, you want to be. You can scroll in and out using the, the mouse uh, wheel. Um, and zooming enhancements or scrolling enhancements, uh, very much a great feature of uh, DevExtreme charts. And of course, it's available on all of those different um, um, Run, I was going to say run times. It's all JavaScript. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> You've been updating your Java again, haven't you? Yeah. All those different platforms, yep. So, Julian, you know, this is exactly like those crime dramas where they're like, enhance that. And so you can just kind of like <laughs> zoom in and go, oh, yeah, yeah. boom. It's a grainy picture, yeah. and all of a sudden it's like they zoom in, it's perfectly uh, rendered. Yeah. And that's exactly yeah. what the chart's doing here, <laughs> except that it's not fiction. It's reality. It's reality, yes. Awesome. And it's not a suspect. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Julian. All right. So speaking of that, we've also got uh, updates to our button and editor styles. So the uh, let's start with the styling mode for the editors. And for the editors, we have three new styling modes. We have, of course, filled. As you can see, it's filled, and when I click in, and you can go to sort of an outline mode. Or if you prefer, you can have it just as outlined, or we even support underlined as well. Now, uh, beyond that, we also have new modes for the buttons as well. And the buttons have three predefined styles. So, of course, there's contained, which means that it's uh, filled in outlined as you can expect is outlined and text only but because these are buttons when I mouse over them you can see that they do react as buttons so it's a nice visual cue for your end users as well and as well you can see that we're supporting uh, those bootstrap style um, uh, themes like uh, normal success default and danger and so forth all right so very nice uh, features uh, and that n these new styles are available for both material and the generic themes. Now you can read more about them, uh, I'm sorry, you can experience them more on our demo site, but let me move on and talk about a new uh, widget that we have, Julian, in this release, and that is the button group. Now the button group was created for a specific reason which I'll talk about in a minute but this as you can see is uh, using a uh, well here it's demonstrating a couple of styles here right it's uh, filled in and just uh, button only but what's nice is these buttons are toggleable as we say or they can be toggled between one or multiple and uh, so it's kind of like a checkbox versus radio box situation but what's nice is they are grouped together as indicates a group of buttons and what's useful is in scenarios like where you are saying oh I've got to set oh margins or uh, alignment or I've got to set the font style you can do that easily using these button uh, using the new button group widget now um, let me uh, show you why one of the reasons we created this and that's because uh, and I hope you're sitting down Julian I we, am I am I'm waiting I'm waiting we've got a new HTML editor uh, component in DevExtreme. And uh, yes. more than that, it supports 
actually um, here let's bring up the little blog post so I can show you a little bit about it and that's because it supports not only HTML it supports markdown as well and uh, double I, yes double yes <laughs> absolutely yeah. markdown I'm a huge fan as well uh, in fact we write all our blog posts in markdown right um, absolutely and it's so it's a HTML uh, what you see is what you get text editor now just to give you a little context in the past a lot of people have asked us a lot of customers said hey would you please, please make an HTML editor? And we, we kind of shied away from it just because there was a lot of good free open source versions out there already. And we said, well, you know, before we make one, we want to make sure we can offer something more. And so what we did in this release is we're releasing a, this HTML te uh, slash markdown text editor as a CTP. And that's because it has a lot of features. We're not quite done with it. But what we did was when we created it, we made use of the open source project called Quill, but we extended it with our own modules, formats, themes, and other elements. And this is one of the main reasons customers wanted us to make it, because now that it's part of DevExtreme, not only do you have access to those excellent DevExtreme themes that we support, but you have access to our support uh, team. You can give us feedback and say, please give me uh, more support. Uh, we offer things like nice toolbar customization. So you, if you want a modal pop-up here, you can do that. A lot of great features. And again, while it's a CTP, it's got things uh, support for things like mail merge, copy paste, uh, supports for HTML and Markdown as storage format. So definitely try it. Of course, there are some limitations, but you know we're planning for support for tables in the future and uh, pop up for in, uh, toolbar for inline formatting, all sorts of things. But really, you know, give us your feedback. Right, go to our GitHub page and say, listen, uh, you know, create an issue and say. For the so and so, I want to see this feature, or I tried that feature in that CTP and it didn't work right. We want to hear it all. Don't worry, you will not offend us, and you can get started today. In fact, just you know, forget about this unstable part, but just copy this NPM, and you can use the NPM package, or better yet, download DevExtreme. All right, Julian, what else is happening with DevExtreme? So let's uh, switch over from the new HTML editor, uh, CTP or not, and go to the, I was going to say scheduler, scheduler. I've got to train <laughs> myself to say it in the American way, the scheduler. That's the right now, way. <laughs> <laughs> one, one great new feature, uh, previously uh, scheduler appointments were shown um, by resource and then by date. As we have here, you have a resource which is called low priority and then a resource which is called high priority. And it was kind of difficult to you know, match them up, especially if you had lots of resources, say people or jobs or tasks or whatever it happens to be. And um, so what we've done here in 18.2 is to add a group by date function to the scheduler so that you can now group scheduler appointments first by the date and then by uh, the resource. So now, as Mihul is showing you here, you can move your appointments around and you can see uh, how the resources are being used for each day and without scrolling from side to side, for example. So group by date, great new feature for the scheduler. Awesome. All right, Julian, so let's move on to the date box. Now, uh, the date box, uh, we've added support for uh, several new items, and including, let's show you, uh, so we wrote a little blog post on it, and here we've added the what we call the highly requested masked input feature. Now, we had this as part of the text box, but you know what? The text box wasn't cutting it for dates, and customers let us know about it. And so we, we spend a good amount of time to make this really awesome in the date box. So not only are we supporting the LDML pattern, and uh, I know you know... Hey, what, 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 the what pattern? Yeah, Julian, everybody knows <laughs> the LDML pattern, right? Yeah. I mean, come on, it's the uh, lo Unicode Locale Data Markup Language, right? I'm so far behind the times, so I'll tell you. <laughs> do what I do. I got a tattoo of it. It, it works fantastic. <laughs> I never forget it. But not only is it support the LDML pattern, which is a popular format. If you do dates on the internet, you're likely familiar with this with, for internationalizational libraries and so forth. But 
we've got support with built-in localization patterns, which I think are actually more useful for our everyday common stuff, as I'll show in a minute. But we also got support for arrow keys and mouse support. And we've extended beyond that. We've got things like escape character support and year autocomplete and detecting by uh, the month by number or symbol. So it's really fantastic. So as you can see here, here's the LDML pattern. But it's more common, let's say if I'm setting up a date, I want to know like, hey, listen, I just want you know, the month, uh, the uh, the date, and the year, I'm sorry, the month, the day, and the year, or I might want something a little bit longer. So I can go short date, or I can say, like, give me the long date, and you can see it'll give me the day of the week along with uh, the spelled out month, as well as uh, the commas and all that good stuff. So, it, you know, I think these built-in formats are also fantastic as well. And as I mentioned, we've got support for autocomplete of the year as well as things like this character support too. Now, uh, Julian, what else is happening with our other widgets? Um, quick update on our file uploader. We have enhanced it now, so we've added uh, some validation options for the file uploader, uh, basically a list of allowed file extensions, a minimum file size, a maximum file size, a, a new chunk size option to allow you to upload very large files as chunks. Um, so that's... Um, something interesting for if you're actually using the file uploader uh, control widget. Uh, the filter builder uh, has been enhanced as well. We've enhanced uh, the group nesting um, feature um, so you can now limit it, say not have it at all or um, uh, enable it. And we've also allowed you to uh, specify a list of available operations for the filter builder. So and and or, um, not and and not or, and so on and so, so forth. To, to basically limit the way your users uh, can build filters um, for, you know, say, a grid or whatever. Awesome. All right, and uh, yeah, that uh, the any of is uh, uh, is really nice. It's a custom filter operation that you can see, as Julian mentioned, you can make custom ones, and we've got this code that you can see, like, oh, I always wanted to make my own custom filter. Well, there you go. All right, Julian, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about a, a new uh, drawer component, and this is a new component that we've added in this release, uh, and I'll talk about why we added it in just a second. But as you can see from the component it work it's called a drawer because like a drawer it moves in and out and it's got a couple of uh, opening modes it can be horizontal or vertical so meaning that if I wanted to come in from the top down and you can you can see from the demo I'm using this little hamburger menu to do this so this actually works really well with responsive layouts where you need navigation from the top or the bottom but we went beyond that this this component uh, provides several options so for example if you want it on the right side we can do that as well and you can see the the content here is going to increase and shrink but I can set it to overlap so now as you can see the content stays put and I'm just overlapping the content and we've got a mo different mode for this as well now uh, this was really created because we created a new set of a new template and new a uh, new layouts for those templates that are really fantastic. So let me just show those to you here, Julian. Uh, so we're gonna get uh, we released this blog post back in October, but basically uh, it says for DevStream for Angular, but we've got new responsive application layouts, obviously for uh, DevStream for Angular, but also for DevStream uh, CLI. So in this blog post, I talked about first a couple of things, which is that a we have improved our Angular CLI support. So we've already had great Angular CLI support, but we also have a new DevStream CLI. Now, what's fantastic is with this one command, or obviously this command, what it will do, it will generate this quick start template. And Julian, it's fantastic. This quick start template gives you this, which is a fully working responsive application. Now, uh, thankfully, before this webinar got started, I did that. I created it, and I started this ng-serve, which has it running locally here. So as you can see here, that I've got it running with this new application layout. It's using this new drawer component, and as you'll see, it is responsive. So as I go, 
and uh, change this. Now, as you can see, when I reduce this, you might go, well, wait a minute, Mohul is broken? No, no, what happened is the drawer component, I told it to be modal, and I said, listen, until the end user makes a choice, I want it to show this. Now, again, this is a fantastic, because I've got the data grid here, I've got uh, uh, user sign-in and so forth, and I've got the home screen, and of course, the new drawer component. So really really fantastic now I want to mention a couple of other things that we have done for uh, this uh, new uh, layout and that is to do specifically with themes now in this release Julian we have uh, in our themes upgraded it so we now support color swatches so what color swatches means is that you can now create and use multiple dev stream color schemes within the same app so for instance, you can implement a dark navigation sidebar and a light content area. So what's great is not only does this mean that you can um, create, uh, 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 this was really difficult before, but you can now create these color swatches using, of course, the DevExtreme Theme Builder UI, or you can use the new DevExtreme Theme Builder CLI. So you can use, we've got a new Theme Builder CLI, which let me show you a little bit of this Visual Studio code. So that uh, app, the CLI that I mentioned, that single line of code, uh, where did it go, right here? This single line of code will generate for you this fully Angular application that has the uh, views and all that good source. And if you take a look under source themes, uh, folder, you'll find a couple of metadata files. And here you can see that the uh, DevExtreme CLI uh, allows you to work with the new Theme Builder CLI as well to generate custom color schemes, uh, save them as CSS without using our Theme Builder UI. So that's really nice. So you can use DevExtreme theme variables within your app to deliver a more consistent UI. Uh, of course, you can still use the, uh, actually, you can still use the Theme Builder UI, which Julian will talk about in a minute, but the Theme Builder CLI can be used to export any theme variable, uh, uh, and we've got support in the future for things like Less and SAS uh, coming up as well. Now, if you are interested, obviously read the blog post, which has links to, of course, the uh, GitHub page where you can learn more about uh, all of this stuff as well. And we've got more samples there as well on the GitHub side too. All right, Julian, speaking of Theme Builder UI, what's happening with the Theme Builder? So the Theme Builder, uh, what we've done is to change the, um, the look and feel, if you like. Um, so if you go here to the uh, site and see Theme Builder, there is this nice red panel on the side saying, try out the new one. And uh, so we've improved the uh, user experience, made it more intuitive, and not only that, it also supports uh, that new feature that um, uh, Mihal was talking about, color swatches. So you can create a swatch, so here we're starting off with the generic theme, and you can create a swatch and save it and then use it within your application. So, you know, to create that um, draw control, draw widgets in a darker uh, swatch than the main window, this is what the new Theme Builder UI is built to do. Now, now I, I hate to tell everybody, but Mihul, I think, um, failed his uh, art exams. Hey! What are you, yeah. what are you, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> oh, I, my word. Green? Uh, that's you fluorescent. Know, green. You know, Johnny <laughs> Ivey comes to me personally for all his uh, advice. <laughs> so with the theme builder, you um, just like before, you can um, you basically see the effect of your changes straight away inside this, um, you know, the example window here, and um, you can also play around with um, you know diving deep into each control and modifying the uh, the colors for each individual part of the control so here we're showing the data grid for example and uh, and here the pivot grid the various colors that are used within those widgets and um, change them to your heart's content to match your you know your logos uh, colors and uh, your uh, your corporate colors I should say corporate themes um, it is a great new uh, 
user interface for our DevExtreme extreme theme builder try it out it's in beta at the moment as you see up there in the top left hand corner it says theme builder beta uh so yes we're still working on it um it works as you can see no, it's fantastic switches. yeah, yeah. It, uh, we want you to use it try it out the the uh standard one is still there and of course, you can still do things like import it, bootstrap variables file, or if you've got an existing DevStream metadata, pull that in and use this new theme builder UI to play around with it. And speaking of themes, Julian, what else yes. is happening? And way from the dark side, we've imported or we've created a dark set of material design themes. So we had the original what, five material themes. And now we have the dark set. Yeah, beautiful. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still, you know, undecided about dark themes. Uh, I've tried them out. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code at the moment uh, with a dark theme to see what it's like and see whether I like it or not. Um, so, yeah, play around. The new dark set of material themes. But you know what? What's what's great about themes <laughs> is, is they're very uh, subjective, right? Meaning that yeah. your end oh, yeah. users. I mean, we've had right, Julian. We've we've had conversations about some of the things we've created in the past where we would even go like, "Oh, I can't believe we created that theme," and then some <laughs> customer would email us and say, "My customers love this theme," and we're like, "Well, that goes to show you what we know, right?" So yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. So, Do not listen to us, but just try them out on your users. Exactly. Let the users decide, right? Awesome. Yeah. All right. Speaking of which, now let's move on to uh, discuss a little bit of some of the other things we talked about. I'm sorry, the other uh, platforms that we support, and that is let's. Uh, we already started, so let's just keep going a little bit more with Angular, and in this release, Julian. We have, as you can see, the, that new CLI, but beyond that, we also have now this CRUD UI scaffolding wizard for Visual Studio. So what's great about this, and, and, I, and I'm a huge fan of you know, helping customers get started with tools. So you might say to yourself like, hey, you know what? I'm using Angular. So you can go even, let's say, start a file new project with the HP.NET Core web application template using Angular. Right, and so you say, okay, great. I'm using uh, this Microsoft template. I've added my Entity Framework core data model. Great. I've got data. I've got the framework that I want to use. All that good stuff. Now I want to use the best Angular controls on the planet. Well, you want to come to DevExtreme. You say, I want DevExtreme, but I don't want to just simply go to their demos all the time and copy, you know, click Angular and say, okay, let's see, I need the drawer, then I need to do this, I need to bring in the X module, which is great. You can absolutely do that, right? You can, heck, you can even copy the sandbox so you know which modules to take and all that good stuff. However, with this new scaffold wizard, what you can do, you can right click, select add and say new scaffolded item, and it'll walk you through a set of wizards and say, look, I want to add a wizard, uh, I want to add an Angular component with DevExtreme UI widget, and then it's going to walk you through a uh, wizard that's similar to the one that we make for uh, MVC uh, controls for DevExtreme as well. And so, as you can see here, uh, the wizard says, listen, what do you want? Data grid tree list, and what do you want to bind to? What's your data context? What's your controller? All that good stuff. And is there anything you want to, which columns do you want, and any settings and features do you want? And it will generate the UI for you that is data bound to and provides CRUD actions, operations for that. So look at that. You've got a full-on way to get started with Angular and generate the UI with DevExtreme now with this excellent UI scaffolding wizard. So I highly, highly recommend it. Now, uh, speaking of our other technologies, Julian, what else is happening with uh, DevExtreme? So in 18.1, we released the CTP version of our DevExtreme React and Vue wrappers. In 18.2, they have been released. It's an official release of their release of manufacturing, but we don't actually manufacture them. <laughs> so 18.2, <laughs> uh, the uh, React and Vue wrappers have been released. They are full production ready and go for it. Uh, the Vue wrappers, um, have a, a bunch of enhancements. I'd go to the what's new probably to, to see what they are. So 
rendering customization via name slots, the VOM directive support, prop validation type checks, TypeScript support, and so on. Uh, React side on the the wrappers, we have um, controlled and uncontrolled modes, uh, rendering customization via native React template components. Wow, um, and so on and so forth. I would definitely take a look at them. As part of this, we've added more demos uh, for Dev Extreme React and View Wrappers, and it says here on my notes, 120 plus technical samples. I'm sure we have more than 120 plus, because I think this uh, these notes are like a week old. So <laughs> <Yes>. exp <laughs> expect more of these by year end. Essentially, we said this before, and you know, looking at this particular view, um, you can see how we support our demos. Uh, you can alter the JavaScript on the side there, the code on the side, and save it, and then see the effect that that change has on the actual demo. It's just a great way to investigate how to use uh, the DevExtreme widgets as they are, but also um, you know, the React and Vue wrappers as well. So that is excellent news. The DevStream React wrappers and Vue wrappers uh, are fantastic. Now, if you are doing React or Vue today, I highly recommend you start taking a look and maybe even using these because, again, uh, you know it makes use of some excellent features already uh, with our controls, and uh, all of DevExtreme is available for those wrappers, which is. I think the best news, right? Because who else gives yeah. you a full library of controls for Vue or React uh, that you can just start getting started with today with those excellent features like an HTML editor or a uh, focus row navigation for the data grade, all that good stuff. Now, speaking of which, Julian, we also have other sets of uh, controls, and uh, I think it's good to differentiate. Just take a minute to differentiate this. Now, if you've been a long-time customer, you've probably seen this before. But it, obviously, if you go to you know GitHub and look at our DevExpress page, you might go like, whoa, DevExpress has a lot happening. And that's right, we do. We're proud of that. But when we first started React, uh, what we did is we actually took a slightly different approach. Well, we asked customers and we said, look, what is it that uh, you, know, you guys really care about? They said, well, we want a really good grid and we want it done right and blah, blah, blah. And so we said, okay, well, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, we want it to work a certain way. Well, we did that. And if you take a look in terms of, if you go to the homepage of DevExtreme and you click on, let's say, for example, this uh, DevExtreme React here, it'll take you to the DevExtreme React grid uh, for Bootstrap and Material UI. And so this, if you take a look and click on the GitHub link, will take you to what we call the DevExtreme Reactive set of controls. Now what this means is, this is where we make things for native React. Now I, I sometimes slip up and say React Native. Correct me if I, if I say that, Julian, because that's a different technology altogether. What we mean by native React is that these were written specifically for React in that they have a composable extendable plugin based architecture and some other good things and you know some slight performance enhancements however as a uh, pm people ask me questions all the time if it was me i would choose the wrappers and you might say well wait a minute Moho, what are you talking about wrappers doesn't sound as cool again if you are uh, if you don't believe me we've written this really nice long blog post that discusses the advantages and so forth of both approaches, right? What's available in one versus the other. And I think the key to take away from this is performance is not that different, but from the wrappers you get way more. But if you are hardcore and you're like, no, I got to have my data grid in React, well, guess what? Uh, you can use that. You can use the DevStream React grid, right? But, uh, but a lot of it also just comes down to how the code looks, right? So the wrapper looks a little bit more like standard DevExtreme versus the native React data grid looks more like what you might see something in React. So again, I wouldn't uh, fret too much about it. All right, so that's just the differentiation. So now let's talk about DevExtreme Reactive, Julian, and what's happening with DevExtreme Reactive? 
Well, the first thing that is new in our native React uh, widgets is a native React chart. And we're still working on it. It's a CTP release for 18.2. And what we have for the, uh, the chart is, well, it's a, it's a chart, you know. It's got various different types of charts, various series, bar charts, and uh, stack series, what have you. Um, you can now specify things like logarithmic exponential, custom axes. Uh, there's a whole color palette management, uh, so you can, you know, display different parts or render different parts of your chart in different colors and so on and so forth. Uh, animations, we have animations with the charts now, as uh, Mihul is showing you as he steps through the various charts that we have. Uh, nice animation. And this is, um, as I said, said um, native react it's react all the way down excellent so uh, speaking of new as we uh, had uh, mentioned in our uh, that post earlier that we intended to reschedule her so we've got the chart we've also got a CTP of a new react scheduler uh, so this is obviously inspired a lot by the dev extreme one and it's got a lot of great features uh, on and you, you can see here, you can uh, view appointments, we've got a week view, we've got a day view, and you might say, well, that's it? Well, you know, give us time. We're writing this completely from scratch, right? So, uh, as I said, if you need something fully featured and or more feature complete and more component complete or just uh, uh, that provides a whole set of more components, the wrappers would be the uh, approach to take. But in the meantime, uh, if you are a fan of just having uh, items uh, in uh, for uh, with our native React controls, then take a look at this stuff. Give us feedback on the GitHub page. You know, go to the issues here and uh, report back and let us know. You know, let us know what broke, or if it's a bug, if it's a question, if it's an enhancement request, all that stuff. Let us know. And uh, speaking of which, Julian, let me also talk about one other thing, and that is. The data grid itself also has a couple of updates as well. So in the data grid, we have added support for uh, fixed columns. So the DevStream data grid now supports, if we take a look at the data editing demo here, we can see the fixed columns. So I've got a command column that's fixed. And as I scroll to the right, you can see that uh, the uh, item it works smoothly and it works in conjunction with other functional, uh, functionality as well, like banded columns or virtual scrolling. So really excellent feature. And we even got some uh, new visualization, uh, sorry, new visual customization components that we can likely see, I believe, on this other demo here. Uh, so let's see, I believe maybe... Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's, a, it's on one of these demos that uh, essentially it's a, it's a new table header row plugin that lets you see uh, items, uh, new items up in there. And like you can create a button that says, hey, I want to do uh, uh, editing and so forth with uh, new buttons at the top there. So again, we'll, we'll have a, you know what, let me just show you the blog post that has an image of it. And you can see it as well. All right, so here it is. Do -do -do -do, new visualization components. So for example, if you click this item, we can sort the grid as well. Ah, actually there is a demo here as well. So let's take a look at that demo. And uncontrolled mode, controlled mode, using sort with grouping, and there it is. All right, so lots of cool, uh, lots of cool things available with custom sort here as well. Okay, Julian, let's uh, now move on and talk about uh, something slightly different for DevExtreme, Extreme, uh, but again, I think it's important to talk about because it's part of the web strategy that we have overall. Now, two days ago, if you follow, you know, devexpress.com slash webinars, you'll see uh, all the webinars that we have upcoming and stuff, but you can also see previously recorded webinars. Now, what's great about this is that, uh, for example, here's an older one that you know, if you just click on it, it'll take you. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because if you look on our DevExpress page, you'll see, uh, for example, the uh, re most recent uh, items that we have done, right? So, for example, uh, 
we have just published the one from Monday where Don and I discuss what was new in ASP.NET, uh, but also ASP.NET Core. And there we had talked about some new items for ASP.NET. So let me walk you through how you can find some, some, some of the stuff. If you click on demos, we've got a fantastic new demo. If you scroll down or if you just click on ASP.NET here and you scroll down, you'll see a lot of the product demos, right? We've got these what we call real world app demos, which are great as well. But we've got this new ASP.NET Core demos that shows the DevExtreme MVC controls for ASP.NET Core, along with the two new DevExpress Office controls that we have introduced in 18.2 as CTP for this release for ASP.NET Core, which is the rich text editor and the spreadsheet. Now, the rich text editor is built with DevExtreme, meaning that this is uh, all uh, built using DevExtreme controls, and it works completely client-side, right? It doesn't have any need to go to the server. And I say that because a spreadsheet works slightly differently because it's a big control and it can work with large Excel files. It has a server portion where it needs to talk to the server for some heavy tasks. But all the uh, UI operations are kept free and light. And you can see, look at this. This is beautiful. It works exactly as you expect. This was the piece, Julian, a lot of our customers had been begging us for. They said, hey, listen, I'm ready to jump to ASP.NET Core, but I need really a truly native ASP.NET Core uh, uh, component that works the way ASP.NET Core works. And this does exactly that. So now, uh, Julian, let me just talk one last piece. And that was, uh, you know, some of our customers, uh, we we had another uh, we had another core offering, but it, these days this is our single core offering because we think this is fantastic. We think that this now provides you essentially everything you need for ASP.NET Core. Now you might say, why are you talking about ASP.NET Core when you're mostly dealing with client side? Again, a lot of our customers do both, right? If you're doing, let's say, push updates with Angular guess what? You're using likely SignalR, right? But a lot of customers have existing uh, uh, items for ASP.NET Core or are thinking about it. But if you are completely on the Angular side, know that this is what's fantastic about DevExtreme. DevExtreme essentially works for uh, all of that. And this is why we're constantly saying uh, DevExtreme, everything that's in DevExtreme bubbles up. So when we added a feature for the data grid, it goes right to the uh, uh, Angular version, to the MVC version, to the ASP.NET Core version, React, View, you name it. So uh, definitely take a look. Now, Julian, uh, we've got a couple of minutes. So uh, before we wrap up, do you want to mention a little bit about this uh, new doc site? So what we've done over the past um, six months or nine months or something like that, we've uh, been thinking about how we present our documentation. And with DevExtreme, we used to have a different site for our documentation than the rest of our products. So what we've tried to do is to amalgamate all of our documentation into one site, which is docs.devexpress.com. And uh, as part of that, we've, uh, you know, behind the scenes been updating the way that our tech writers our documentation writers actually write documentation and uh, publish it and and so on and so forth so it's uh, a work in progress we haven't quite finished uh, converting all our documentation to the new site but uh, by all means have a have a look at it and uh, play around with it and see what we have and how it works it looks um, pretty similar uh, to what we had before but uh, it's uh, different behind the scenes, shall we say? Yeah, it's it's a work in progress. Uh, I like it, uh, but again, it's it's an effort that we're constantly thinking about how to improve the experience for you guys overall. And uh, again, you know what's nice is that it's all in one place. So right now, on for example, help.devexpress.com, we've got a lot of the uh, the items. And again, I I'm a big fan of this help as well, right? Uh, and right now, as Julian mentioned, we, you know, DevExtreme's docs are uh, on here. But eventually, we'll, uh, you know, have one unified place where you can just see everything together. They'll all have the same look and feel, and it will all be to the same great help. And once again, you know, let me make this one other mention. When we ask for feedback, it doesn't just go 
for our products. It goes for our support, our documentation. So if you find something where we're lacking somewhere, let us know. And, you know, our teams will work to improve that. All right, Julian, uh, thanks very much. If you have any parting words, I'll hand it over to you. And I'd just like to say that uh, we've mentioned it throughout the webinar, but uh, we do like having feedback. And in fact, over the past year, we've tried extremely hard to gain more feedback from you, our customers, through things like surveys. Um, and the fact that you know, DevExtreme is on GitHub means that you can provide feedback directly through GitHub for uh, DevExtreme and uh, the widgets there. So. Use them all. If we do send you a survey, fill it out. Let us know what you want, why you want it, more detail about what it is. And, you know, if it makes us smack our forehead and go, what? Yes, of course, we should do that. More the better for you. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Amanda. Back to you. Great. Thank you. Um, and thanks to the team. They really, they knocked out all of those questions. Awesome. Wonderful. Anything uh, interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you all see the questions or no? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. I'll, but if you guys have any grand questions for Julian and I, like, why aren't you guys going in this direction or that direction, you know, email us or better yet, tweet us. Uh, let us know. Uh, you know what? I'd love to know which of the features you saw today that got you really kind of excited about, like, yeah, this is why I'm going to upgrade to 18.2 right now. So definitely tweet at us. Let us know because, again, it's all it's always nice to hear from other developers and how they're using our stuff. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. Cool. All right, everybody. Like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be made available later on our DevExpress YouTube channel. And you will also get that follow-up email with a link to this webinar recording sometime next week. Uh, we do have a couple 18.2 webinars left this week, what's new in WPF and what's new in dashboards, reporting, and analytics. You can register at devexpress.com slash webinars. And that is it for this one. Thanks so much to Julian and Mahul. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.